Good morning. Uh, welcome everybody to this uh, uh, session, Transforming Talent into Impact. Well, uh, we believe uh, that uh, in order to obtain impact, uh, we need uh, widespread talents. Uh, hiring uh, one specific talent like a uh, uh, data scientist, for example, or an artificial intelligence expert is not the solution. What we need is the migration. We need that employees like Flock migrate the company from the old paradigm of fossil fuels, mass production, uh, waste to the new manufacturing, which is green, digital, and socially and environmentally sustainable. So what uh, we do in our uh, education activities uh, in IT manufacturing, we, yes, educate uh, young people to become uh, excellent uh, scientists, engineers, technicians uh, with uh, an entrepreneurial and innovation skill set on top. But not only this, we also address uh, all the individuals, uh, that the workers and the companies. And we offer them a customized learning path that bring them towards the acquisition of new skills, new talents that are necessary for this migration. So today, we, you will have an overview of all the activities that we are doing, and particularly in the first part of this section, you will have the opportunity to see some highlights of these activities. And in, while the second part of this section will be dedicated to impact. So I am pleased now to introduce you to Carolina Torregrosa Gallo, our program education program manager to coordinate and facilitate the first part of this section. Thank you, Carolina. Thank you, Paola, and welcome all to this event on uh, EIT Manufacturing Education. Uh, Paola already mentioned that we will be having some activities, so today we will have uh, three uh, of our education campus presenting how they are generating impact and how they can support the manufacturing industry. Uh, yesterday and today we have seen or we have listened about many speakers on the importance of education uh, on the manufacturing sector. So I would like to welcome on stage Marta Pinzone from the Politecnico di Milano, uh, who will be presenting the uh, YML uh, activity. Welcome, Marta. Well, thank you very much, Carolina. I'm very happy to uh, share with you uh, the work we have been doing with the Young Manufacturing Leaders Network, that is uh, an international initiative, an international community open to young people uh, from 18 to 30 years old that want to uh, spread the awareness and the enthusiasm for the ongoing transformation that uh, manufacturing is uh, undertaking, as uh, Paula already said, uh, they uh, want to also uh, create a bridge between uh, young people and connect them with uh, the industrial world and the many opportunities that manufacturing can offer to them. But uh, above all, uh, would like to empower young people with new skills and new opportunities to uh, realize their idea to shape the future of uh, uh, the industry and, uh, and the sector. Uh, so the idea of the Young Manufacturing uh, Leaders Network uh, was born in uh, late 2019. And then uh, I would say that we uh, found in the EIT Manufacturing community, the perfect community uh, to uh, kickstart uh, our uh, network and uh, uh, turn the idea into something uh, real and uh, 
uh, tangible. Uh, so thanks to uh, the support that uh, EIT Manufacturing has always provided to us, we have been able to uh, start the network in uh, 2020. And this year we have been working in order to uh, make it grow in terms of uh, new members, but also uh, new activities uh, that uh, we can do together with uh, our young uh, manufacturing leaders. Uh, so to provide uh, you an overview, uh, some concrete examples about the um, status of the network and the work uh, we do and the results and impact we have achieved so far, we have uh, created a short uh, um, video that uh, I, I would like to share with you all. So I, I kindly ask the technical team uh, to launch it. Thank you uh, to all uh, uh, the city hubs and the young manufacturing leaders that are uh, actively involved in uh, the activities at the local level and at the network level, and that uh, has allowed us to uh, reach more than 1,500 young people so far. So a big thank you to them. Thank you very much, Marta. Uh... I don't have any doubts that this is a really interesting project and that it's moving a lot of people. So I would like you to ask a really quick, quick question. It's about if someone wants to join the network, what he or she should do? Well, it's uh, pretty uh, simple. Just go to our website, Young Manufacturing leaders.org and there is a, a form uh, where that you uh, should fill in with uh, some simple information and then uh, you are uh, connected one, with one of the city hubs uh, and then involved uh, in the activities and uh, in the different uh, um, tasks that uh, we do together. Great Marta, so uh, I invite Anyone who wants to join, to join, we will be sharing the link through the chart uh, shortly. Marta, thank you very much. And now let me welcome stage uh, Hussein Tarhini from Fraunhofer Institute in Germany, who will be presenting a project which is called AM Help, which is particular because it's using uh, Industry 4.0 enabling technology 
in a different sector, in the health sector. So Hussein, welcome on stage. Yeah, thank you, Carolina. And uh, also thanks to Marta, very interesting video focusing on the younger people. And I think what I'm doing here is focusing more on the later stage of professionals who, and, and looking to upscale them and reskill them. So maybe I would start by not sharing as an impressive video, but a, a small presentation that I prepared for today. Um, I hope my screen is visible right now. Maybe you can give me a quick hint on that. Yeah, we are seeing it. Fantastic. So Additive Manufacturing Hospital Learning Program is a program that has been funded by EIT. It's also in the educational field. And as the name suggests, it's additive manufacturing that's being introduced to hospitals and medical professionals. It's a collaboration, obviously, first between EIT and four partners. That is an AG and Enish Tech in, uh, from Porto in Portugal, Fraunhofer IAPT from Hamburg in Germany, and Politecnico di Milano from Milano in Italy. So before I tell you what this project is about, maybe I'll tell you a small story on, on how do we get to this project. Um, we're all very used in manufacturing to these very beautiful or these very complicated and interesting supply chains that we have and very reliable supply chains, or that's what we always thought until COVID happened. And suddenly all of these supply chains started breaking down and we couldn't get simple products available and we were noticing huge shortages. I don't need to remind anybody because I think some people are still living it till now with the shortages that we are having. But how does this connect to hospitals where hospitals were also greatly affected by COVID? And that's not only because they had a huge influx of more patients that needed care, but they had also the same shortages most hospitals do not produce their, uh, their uh, products or most hospitals do not even source their products locally. And uh, we, we saw it everywhere on the news and every day and it was very tragic with, with hospitals lacking basic equipments. But what we also saw is people starting to learn about additive manufacturing or 3D printing. This is where all of my friends started coming to me and finally understanding what I do. Um, we saw that 3D printing came and somehow elevated the pain the hospitals were having. They were able to produce lots of equipments that are um, usable in these pandemics from face shields to face masks. We saw lots of innovative products like handles to open um, doors without having to, to uh, touch these doors, so hands-free operations. But not only that, we saw lots of other places in, in, in spare parts where metal additive manufacturing was used to produce locally spare parts that are needed for these respirators and the IC units. And um, I don't have the time to go through all of these today. So I would like you to go to 3dprintingindustry.com. There's a, there's a beautiful link here that I provide about all of the things 3D printing was doing. And we realized that, yeah, 3D printing is important for hospitals, but not only during crisis, there's lots of applications, there's tons of applications right now for additive manufacturing in hospitals. And there's very little adoption except in the very high level of, of research from better implants to, to surgical guides to tools that patients can use. And this is where the idea of the hospital learning program starts from. If we want hospitals to use additive manufacturing, we have to educate them about it first. And, it start, and it's done in three phases. First, we have the introduction where we introduce them to the technology. And then we help them through education to make the decision whether they wanna make the products themselves, so having localized production or buy it from close by suppliers, and then how to implement all of this in their hospitals. And this is where the program starts. And as you can see, we have three modules in this program. And uh, it's the introduction to AM, make or buy decisions, and then the technical implementation. This program is divided into two things. We have the e-learning and the hands-on training. The e-learning is available on the Skill Moves program from EIT. And uh, ideally, the, the um, doctor, we know they are very busy people. They want to have on their own time. They can learn most of the basics online. And then later on, they can go come to our institutes and do some more hands-on experience 
with additive manufacturing. And I'm just gonna show you a bit of what this hands-on experience can look like. So we know that medical people are not designers and they are not engineers, but how can they use the technology? And in a response to crisis, there was this really nice application where you can fit a face mask to your, a face, mask to your face by printing a contour shield. And uh, we showed through this workshop how to start from a 3D scan, how to create the part and how to finally print it in a way that even a medical guy in his 40s or even in his 60s can follow up without having lots of digital knowledge. We also look at other applications like printing organ replicas. So starting from these CT scans and MRI scans that doctors are very familiar with and how to move them to obtain a final printable part that they can use to plan their surgeries or plan their implants. And finally, we had some other application that's right now hyped in the 3D community, which are these uh, casts that you can put for customized or these casts that are very customizable for patients. And we also show the doctors how they can start with a 3D scan of a, of a patient and how they can produce these really comfortable, customizable casts for them. And the most important thing of this project is these are very much tailored to medical people with no engineering or design experiences. And with that, I would hand you back, Carolina. If you have any questions, feel free. Well, Hussein, that's uh, pretty impressive what you're doing. And it's uh, really nice to see how you're pushing additive manufacturing to the health industry. Um, so if you can stop sharing the screen, perfect. I will ask you a really short questions because we are running out of time. Which is the feedback you're receiving for, from hospitals so far? They are very interested. In fact, we have two hospitals lined up now in Hamburg who are gonna be attending our workshops. Um, there's lots of applications in the hospitals and from different fields. I was even speaking with lots of uh, colleagues of mine in the medical field with their own practices. And we noticed lots of dentists are highly interested in the technology and in such programs. Okay, really interesting and good luck on, on the next phases of the project. Thank you. Uh, now uh, I would like to welcome Doris Askenbrenner from the Technical University of Delft, that today she will be presenting uh, Mirror Labs. Uh, Mirror Labs is a project that's focusing in another topic, which is creating an ICT framework for enabling and enhancing the training experience. Doris, the floor is yours. Doris, you're muted. Thank you very much, dear Carolina and dear Vistas, um, for um, this uh, for my small presentation here. Um, I'm sharing my screen, which to just like give you a very brief overview of what we're doing. Um, you can see that the manufacturing industry is currently getting uh, much more complex and less transparent due to all of these different AI technology. But we still need to stay on top of things as a human being. So we need to have new methods of being connected to the factory uh, and to communicate. So apart from the factory 4.0, we also need the operator 4.0 who will be able to understand what's going on at the factory. And one means which can be used is a new technology named augmented and virtual reality, which we propose to be using within that environment and which at EAT Manufacturing helps us to, live, uh, to develop together with a large team of great partners. And um, what we are doing is basically we're putting the, the person in the middle of the system and we're creating an augmentation layer between the worker and the factory in order to make it more comprehensible and to make the human stay on top of things um, with respect to everything which is coming upon us, like digitization, robotization. Um, and uh, we use uh, technology as a, a means to help us to understand com, uh, and to, to adhere to this kind of new situation, either on physical capabilities, on sensing capabilities, and on cognitive capabilities. And um, exactly what we're trying to do is to help people understand the robots, like in collaboration situation with the robot, to understand the robot, um, but on to be able to productively interact and understand, to trust the system, and to share tasks between the robot and human. And this is a very small example, which, uh, which will show um, human-robot co-production scenario in the real world. 
And as you can see here, we need some means for interaction and communication between the person and the worker and the, the robot. And uh, we're using actually virtual reality in order to prototype these different means of interaction. You can see here, this is the same setting within virtual reality and you are able to see the projected trajectory of the, of the robot. And with that, we can discuss what could be uh, done next. And we also can implement learning and teaching within that virtual reality environment. And not only that, we can also use the same framework to um, use virtual, not only virtual reality, but augmented reality next to the real robot. Here you can see a virtual robot, which is a digital twin. Um, and uh, with uh, and it is viewed by the Microsoft HoloLens. And our consortium has developed this framework to be able to connect robots um, and other factory and machinery data via MQTT to uh, this virtual reality and augmented reality environment. We can use it to realize applications for making yeah, humans and robots work together for a sustainable future. And thank you very much for your attention and thank you very much EAT Manufacturing for making this possible and of course for the great team uh, I'm able to work with in respect to this. Thank you Doris, that's pretty impressive. A uh, really quick question for you. If people want to access, access sorry, your IC2 framework, what they will need to do? Yeah, you can just come on mirrorlabs.eu and there are links. Um, and it's officially published on the Apache 2 license uh, within the TUDEL 40U framework. It's officially accessible. We also are published on this already and we will produce, hopefully it gets through, but we will have a workshop uh, on the IEEE EDR conference on this topic and just inviting new collaborators to use the framework, to get connected and to discuss the research attempts we all are making at the moment. It's especially interested for a small and medium sized enterprises because it's quite a vast, like you need to connect a lot of different types of technology. And we just share the vision of open mind, open future, open source. And so you can use it uh, as a small and medium sized enterprise in order to build your own application based on that. Okay, great, Doris. Thank you very much. So I invite everyone to go to Mirror Labs webpage and try to join or join uh their site uh okay so i uh, thank you very much Doris. we have now ended this first session and now i will leave the stage to my colleague javier gonzalez to introduce the second part of the education parallel session hello javier hi carolina thank you very much thanks a lot to all, uh, all of you that's all the, the very nice very interesting projects and activities that you are developing with a lot of impact and, 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 and with, uh, with a lot of interest for uh, uh, for the manufacturing community. So congratulations for your activities and thank you very much. Um, my name is Javier Gonzalez. I'm education developer uh, in CLC West of ET Manufacturing located in, in San Sebastian. And today I will uh, moderate this session uh, with the, uh, in which we would like to share with you uh, the, the impact of the EIT manufacturing education activity. So what is the, the activities that we are doing and especially the people who which is behind these activities inside our team in, uh, in EIT manufacturing. I think it's a very good opportunity for you to know us and to know that those uh, people managing all these, uh, all these activities and helping you, we are here for you and helping you to implement all the actions. So I uh, will invite my, uh, my colleagues to start sharing the, the screen. My colleagues, Linda Ferro, uh, which is the digital learning manager uh, and in EAT uh, education team. Thank, hello, Linda. Uh, thanks for being here. Uh, Loris Valero Lecond, the master and PhD officer. Hello, Loris. Thanks for being, uh, for being here with us today. Monica Primozic, uh, education developer in, in CLCS East. Uh, hello, Monica, thanks. Uh, Monica Blodgett, the Hay Initiative Project Manager. Hello, Monica, thank you for being with us today. And uh, Ivana Lukakova, CrossKick Project Manager. Hello, Ivana, thank you very much for joining the session and, uh, and to be with, uh, with us today. So uh, education programs that we, that we develop, so uh, they, I always try to help us to, to help to provide the European workforce with the right skills and uh, and also to provide good opportunities for uh, for them and that is what we want to do in the in the education pillar and I would like to start with these opportunities with the, with the opportunities that can be 
uh, can be given by these uh, these programs. And I would like to ask uh, Loris, uh, my colleague Loris, about uh, the master and, and PhD uh, activities that you already know that we develop in EIT manufacturing. So uh, this is one of the, our key activities, one uh, more most recognized. And uh, I would like to I would like to ask you, Loris, about what are the opportunities that the students have by uh, when they take part in these programs. Well, uh, first of all, Javier, thank you for this question and thank you for the, the, the general organization of the summit. So when it comes to your question, uh, the master and doctoral school programs are offering a lot of opportunities for the students. And the first one is, of course, the EIT manufacturing network. Uh, the possibility to participate to many opportunities like hackathons, uh, summer school, winter schools, all the activities that we are organizing, and that can help them in, to obtain hard skills like uh, entrepreneurship mindsets, but also soft skills that are more and more needed today, like uh, intercultural flexibility, because in the globalized world, it's more and more needed. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, of course, uh, the EIT label certification, so which attests of the quality of the programs they are participating to. Um, and finally, when it comes also to the master program, since it's a two year program with two top universities in Europe, uh, it's really the opportunity to, you know, travel to learn uh, really about manufacturing in really interesting programs and uh, really get uh, a new insight and a new way to do things. Now that's fantastic, Loris, and very, very interesting. So those topics about the international experience, so these EIT levels or this recognition that we get from the, uh, from the EIT and all these kind of opportunities of participating in different uh, activities like summer schools, the hackathons and, and so on. And you're doing a great job with the, with the students so managing them, so that's, that's very nice, that's very nice. Thank you very much, uh, Loris. We will come back to you uh, afterwards with more with more questions. And uh, I think that also the, the promotion of these activities is very interesting for us. So uh, you already know we have the our website, we are in, in social media channels, and we always try to make promotion of that. And for this reason, we have the education developers in each one of the CLCs. So I'm one I'm part of, of, of these teams of education developers. But today we have here our colleague Monica from CLC East in Vienna. Uh, and I would like to, to see your, uh, your views on that. So what, to, maybe we, we, you can explain our audience uh, a little bit what is our role as I include myself also in this role of education developers. What is our role on the, uh, the education developers in EAT manufacturing? Thank you very much, Javier, for the question. I will try to speak on behalf of both of us, but in education, we are organized slightly different than in the other three pillars of EAT manufacturing. So we have one education manager, Carolina, who you all met before, and she centrally manages the portfolio of all education activities, programs, and CAVAs. So in collocation centers, in this case, in my case, collocation center East in Vienna, and in Javier's case, collocation center in West in um, San Sebastian, right. we as an education developer actually are responsible both for promotion of education programs at the local level organization facilitation of education and training courses we have, as well as dissemination and public engagement. Um, currently, we are actually three education developers in EIT manufacturing uh, in CLC West, CLC South, who just joined us, and CLC East. But we will soon have a colleague joining also in CLC North and CLC Central. So we are very happy that we are expanding and it's a pleasure to be education developer of EIT manufacturing. That's great. So thanks, Monica, for your for your overview. And, and that's and I think this role is crucial also to spread the voice, to spread the words about what we are doing, and also to connect with the local uh, communities, with the local networks that we have in each one of the of the CLC. So and I'm very happy also to be part of that. <laughs> so no, thank you very much, uh, Monica, and um, and also to. It's really interesting. So it's a way to cover all the European countries that in which EIT manufacturing is uh, is present. Also to promote those initiatives of the really of the actions that the, and, and, and services that we are doing. And one of these is uh, I think it's very it has been mentioned before in the presentations and during the uh, during the summit is our online learning platform skills move. And it's great that we have today 
uh, our colleague Linda Ferro behind this uh, this tool to to know a little bit about a little bit more about that and and, and about skills move. So uh, Linda, thanks for being with us. I would like to ask you um, so which about which is the the, the target of the tool uh, of, of skills move. And, uh, and, and which are the key topics that we can find in, 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 in skills, well, who is using that and, and who is consuming this content and, and this learning uh, uh, content from the, from the platform. So just to give an overview about uh, skills. Yeah. Thank you, Javier, for introducing myself and for letting me speak about the uh, skills move just really briefly. Those yes. two questions are really key and essential. So for what concerns the target, uh, um, our aim is indeed upskill and reskill of the current and also the future manufacturing workforce. So um, with these two words, I mean that we are targeting uh, like employees and students that may find in the um, skills move some lessons and uh, something more than three lessons, also some paths. Um, by consuming those paths, they will be able to um, develop and achieve some uh, skills and competencies. At the same time, we are also targeting managers and teachers that may find in Skills Move a great tool to um, manage their learners' experience. So to monitor, for instance, the progress of their learners and of their classroom, of their employees. For what concerns the topic, um, we, we have been working with our partners in identifying what we consider to be the leading and the main um, trend in the manufacturing techno in the technology in manufacturing industry. Um, so we may say that all the content has been developed coherently with these trends, four trends uh, that rep are represented by EIT manufacturing for flagships that exactly. just briefly are like the um, human machine collaboration, the flexibility in manufacturing. So for instance, additive manufacturing or the green manufacturing and the fine, last but not least the digital manufacturing. No, that's great, that's great. So, and, uh, and, and in fact, this is uh, the priorities and what we see when we speak with companies that these are, uh, these are yeah. hot topics, you know, and it's great to have a platform in which we can also learn uh, uh, about, uh, about those and, and, and also uh, in a very, uh, very good way, so easy to use and that's, uh, that's fantastic. So skills is a uh, great, great, a uh, great tool. Thank you very much, Linda, for this uh, for this input. We will also come back to you afterwards with some some key questions. And um, yeah, as mentioned, Skillsbook is a, is a great tool. And and talking about tools for education, so uh, we there are a lot of interesting tools and methodologies that we can use uh, when in the plot, developing the education activities. And uh, we are very lucky that we have today our colleague Ivana. Uh, hello, Ivana, which has been working in several cross kick projects, uh, which are also dealing with the uh, the use and the, the future and the promise and the most promising uh, uh, tools for education. And uh, but before going into that topic, Ivana, I would like uh, to ask you to, uh, uh, to to see your your view about how, why this cross kick project or these projects in which all the kicks collaborate are so important for uh, for us. So just a few words on that on that topic. Uh, good morning. Thank you. Thank you, Javier. Um, I think it's a very good question because uh, each innovation community is addressing different sectoral challenge, but uh, we also face uh, common challenges in, in regard of the education. Those could be um, digital or green skills, also skills gap analysis, yeah. and also financial sustainability of the activities. So during the cross kick uh, <laughs> meetings and uh, projects, we try to identify uh, those areas where we can join the forces to achieve the better results and um, cross fertilize the knowledge and expertise. No, that's great. And I think it's a very nice opportunity. So though many of us are also involved in, 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 in those projects and is a very nice opportunity for cooperation, for collaboration, creating network, and also what you mentioned, which is key so to address those uh, uh, those common topics that are uh, also priorities for all the the EIT kicks. Um, no, and that's that's great. And but just going back to the topic about the tools, uh, you have been involved in in some projects in which you have 
uh, already tested or, or uh, uh, analyzed the most uh, promising, some of promising tools for education. So what can you tell us about the, 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 the what, what do you think, what, what tools can be the more promising for the education activities according to your experience in the, in the CrossKick projects? Well, definitely AI. Uh, AI tools are going to completely transform our teaching and learning habits. And therefore, AIT Manufacturing introduced the activity uh, focused on um, virtual and uh, augmented reality trainings. So we try to um, develop a platform, mm -hmm. immersive training platform, which is supposed to connect uh, educators or training implementers or any kind of uh, vocational training centers who need um, and some kind of help or maybe reach out to us for um, suggestion or recommendation, what type of um, this kind of AI tools to use for the training. Yeah. And um, it seems like uh, they are still at the beginning, you know, all the educators are trying to use these tools, but they don't know sometimes how, or maybe they don't use them effectively. Uh -huh. But the platform is going to um, provide this kind of a recommendation tool where yes. you will be able to insert all the relevant data about your course, like training objectives, like budget, target group, and the tool is going to recommend you. Okay, for this kind of training, you're going to use, or you should use the VR tool or uh, augmented reality tool exactly. or reality tool. So I think um, this, we are at the beginning, as I said, but as, uh, as we are trying to build this community, I do believe that um, AT manufacturing could be the leader in the, in the EIT co community. <laughs> and, sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and definitely, if you would like to learn more about the project and about the pilots, the results, please um, register for our workshop on December 16th. So if you go to the booth of Cross Key Human Capital, you will find uh, in the last slide of the presentation, the link. And so you're all welcome. So I'm not going to say everything, all the details. <laughs> so I would like to welcome you uh, at this event, but uh, definitely I believe AI tools can help us to, to improve the inclusiveness. Uh, it can also contribute to safety during the training. And yeah. we also cover the carbonization goal. So <laughs> you can do it uh, online uh, in digital way. Although VR and AR is going beyond digital. So right. It's not only about digital. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic, Ivana. Thank you very much. And, and thanks for uh, reminding us so that we, we can visit the booths uh, and in the expo area uh, here, and you can get more information about those projects and the activities that are uh, that are uh, that are there. Thank you very much, Ivana. Very, very, very interesting and, and, and of course very promising tools that we will uh, definitely use and not so in, in a short period of time for sure. So even if we are starting with that, but we will we will uh, we will use that. Uh, thanks, Ivana. And uh, and I think that one of the places in which those tools will be used or uh, will be one of the main points where uh, many places for that will be the higher education institutions or universities uh, mainly, um, uh, which are also a so fundamental part of the uh, uh, EAT manufacturing community. And, um, and, and they play a key role in promoting the innovation, promoting entrepreneurship, promoting those kind of, uh, uh, of mindsets in the, uh, in, the, in the students' community. And for this, uh, EAT manufacturing also is, is in, in, in the framework of the CrossKick project. So that's why this project is so, so important. We are participating in one great initiative, which is called the Hay Initiative, in which uh, my colleague, Monica Blodgett, Blodgett is leading these activities in the uh, uh, AT manufacturing team. So thank you, Monica, for being uh, with us today. And um, maybe you can give us some words about this uh, really, really interesting activity and this, is, uh, this interesting uh, initiative. So. How would you describe in, so in a few words, what is this initiative about and which are the main objectives that we have in this, uh, in this initiative? Uh, sometimes maybe it's, it's complicated to do it in a short time <laughs> because it's a huge initiative, but just so the, the key points of, uh, of the Hay Initiative. Absolutely, thank you, Javier. And I know you've been really involved with the initiative, so you can understand that it's a very important and also complex initiative. Um, the main objective of the Hay Initiative is to improve capacity building in higher education institutions around innovation and entrepreneurship. 
There are four main principles of the initiative, which are empowerment, self-assessment, knowledge sharing, and integration across the knowledge triangle. Mm -hmm. um, so in practice, the initiative invites higher education institutions to form action plans around the domains of the initiative. Yeah. So the domains are relating to fostering institutional change from a higher education perspective, as well as strengthening partnerships across the knowledge triangle, mm -hmm. which is a really key part of this initiative because while it does invite higher education institutions to improve their own capacities, it also aims to better integrate them into regional innovation ecosystems. In addition to this, it hopes to um, invite higher education institutions to improve business services as well as entrepreneurial teaching as well. So in terms of EIT's involvement, um, EIT and EIT Manufacturing offers coaching and workshops as well as funding up to 1.2 million euros per project. Uh, that so is, that's, that's just in a nutshell. <laughs> no, it sounds very sounds very great. And just link with link with that. So it's a great great opportunity, especially for the universities, but not only for the universities, also for all the actors of the knowledge triangle to participate in these uh, in, in this activity because we have a call right now which is open, right? So uh, very briefly, some highlights of this uh, call which is now open. Sure, absolutely. So the second call launched on November eighteenth. Um, for our first pilot cohort, 24 projects were awarded, um, but for the second call, we hope to award up to 40 projects. So we are scaling up. Um, in terms of who can apply for this, a higher education institute is defined as a post-secondary institute awarding tertiary degrees that is recognized on a mm -hmm. national level. So it right. needs to be an accredited institution. Yeah. Um, in addition to the primary coordinator, there needs to be at least two other Hayes involved, as well as, as you said, actors from across the knowledge triangle. Mm -hmm. And they will form a consortium. Yep. Um, there's no maximum in the number of partners that can be involved in this consortium. Cool. And again, an emphasis on regional integration. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the call launched on November 18th will be expanding and hope to award 40 projects. And the deadline to apply is February 28th. Um, as Ivana mentioned, we also have a Hay booth. If anyone wishes to come by, can answer any questions and there's a large amount of information contained that's, there. As well. Yeah, that's great. So, and we definitely invite the audience to look at the uh, the booth, to look at the next call, to ask, ask any questions. And, and, and so to join this uh, interesting initiative, which is focused on generating what you mentioned, so this change, uh, institutional change in universities and, and also to, to foster the innovation and entrepreneurship. So thank you very much, Monica, for uh, clarifying us and give us, giving us uh, a global overview of the initiative. And, and, and we stay, we still stay in the higher education institutions. And, and we, I come back to my colleague, to Laurie's again about, <laughs> about uh, uh, the, the, the future in uh, of the master and doctoral school, the future objectives of the activities and where we develop in master and, and doctoral school. So can you give us some words about uh, what is our aim in that? Well, uh, you know, higher education is about learning and evolving. So it's kind yeah. of limitless, all the opportunities <laughs> we may have. Sure. Uh, but, uh, well, I can tell you about developing new programs uh, related to CSR, sustainability, ecology, digitization, all those topics that are so actual right now right. that everybody's talking about. But when it comes really to the master and doctoral school program, actually the aim would be really to create an alumni community. Um, right. And we have a lot of opportunities in the future that are coming. So we will keep you posted, of course. Um, uh, so really enri uh, enrich uh, the community, the EITB manufacturing community also but also helping the students to innovate, helping yeah. them to open their companies or maybe do research. Uh, for example, if a master's student ends his uh, master program, he might want to do um, a PhD afterwards. And our aim would be to be along the way and helping with all um, the steps of his career. 
And also on a more technical level, we will also planning to, we are also planning on using tools that are created by the EIT manufacturing. But I think uh, some of my colleagues here are more suited to answer this question. <laughs> uh, we, we, we see to, uh, to Linda maybe. So, because uh, that's great what you mentioned that, and this is a way for you to see how we are trying to integrate the activities that we do and in and, uh, and a different, uh, programs that we manage uh, together. And maybe, uh, so Linda, can you please maybe re reflect a little bit about how other products or the services or the other uh, uh, activities, what we do are also integrated in, into skills mode, right? Yeah. Yeah, sure. It's super interesting, actually. And thank you, Loris, for introducing the topic, actually. So what we are doing now uh, from the education point of view, uh, of course, skills moving is integrated with all our products and services we are offering to our partners and also external companies. Uh, so, for instance, the professor for the master and PhD are using uh, or are developing content in skills move and then using through their lessons, or even better, they are using the content developed by other organizations and taking advantage from this knowledge, let's say. Yeah. Um, so here it can back the concept of community and knowledge sharing. Um, also, we are um, performing some pilot uh, regarding from what regards to blended learning. So and the, the skills move can be used there. Um, and uh, mix it indeed blended uh, with uh, live experiences or so workshop, uh, task uh, and activities and so on. Um, last and but not least, definitely, um, Skills Move is also a tool uh, that enable teaching and learning factories. Right. So this is something that we would like to focus on, particularly next year. Um, and uh, Skills Move will enable also this point. Uh, to close uh, and to fully answer your question, Javier, I would like to mention that um, Skills Move uh, plays a integration role, let's say, also with other pillars, because also innovation and this uh, are developing content uh, uh, strictly related to their project uh, into Skills Move. So let's imagine that uh, when a new technology is going to be developed or is when they are investing on developing the technology, and of course uh, it has the um, it must be used from by people exactly. and those people need to be upskilled and reskilled and then they right. can use a skills move to being upskilled and reskilled indeed that's that's so great hope answers yeah yeah for sure sure no, that, and 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 what we need to thanks a lot linda and what we need to do is to spread this word across all of europe and uh, and 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 for this i think that the role of uh, the education team and also the education developers is, is also very, uh, very interesting to that. So maybe just to finalize this session and also to, uh, to see uh, examples of what we are doing uh, in education team, maybe Monica, can you please uh, tell us some details about the activities that you are doing to promote all these actions uh, across the CLCs as an example, we are doing that in all the CLCs, but as an example of, uh, of the activities that we have done. Thank you very much, Javier, and also Linda for highlighting one of the activities uh, that I actually wanted to talk about. But um, let's say on top of the generic role I, I previously talked about that we have as education developers, uh, my role and, and Javier's role and <laughs> is also to engage and get to know the local system where we work. So from startups, SMEs, corporates, as well as universities and research institutions. Um, one thing I think that is important to, to mention is that um, this year with Javier, we, we conducted uh, so-called upskilling and reskilling interviews. Like yesterday, we heard how important upskilling and reskilling uh, is in manufacturing. And, and for example, through, through those interviews, we have actually learned that uh, training uh, needs that industries have across the Europe um, is, is actually quite important. So, for example, we have learned that there is a need for practical or so-called really hands-on training, uh, as, for example, in teaching learning factories that we offer. Um, yeah. We also believe that this form of training is useful uh, for both current and future manufacturing workforce, workforce, and we really see a great potential in it. And if I continue with what Linda was already mentioning, is that um, we are currently piloting in CLC East, a so-called blended learning training model uh, with Technical University in Vienna. And we are combining actually these online small learning units that are offered in Skills Move um, through the in-person practical training in the lab. 
Uh, and we do hope that we get some really constructive feedback um, and implementation of this training method. Uh, and perhaps this is basically something we can offer in the future. Uh, overall, the role of education developers, and I think I speak here on behalf of all of us, uh, is very interesting. And definitely there are numerous challenges uh, lying in front of all of us in all regions of Europe. Thank you. Exactly. So thank you very much, Monica. Thank you, all of you, uh, Monica, Linda, Ivana, Monica, and Loris, for your views on that. So it has been really, really interesting to see, uh, to have your testimony here and to see the activities and the impact we are creating with the EAT manufacturing activities. And um, to me, it has been really a pleasure to be with you today. So we are just, this is just a, a small as a representation of the whole team. So not all the whole team is here today, but we are, there are more people behind that. And, and so don't not forget that the, the work is done by people and people is doing this change and, the, and fostering this change in the, in the manufacturing arena. So we invite you to visit our website, uh, eatmanufacturing.eu, to follow us in the social networks, to visit the booths that you have, uh, have available and, and hoping for getting more information on what we have uh, discussed today. And uh, we wish you a very nice continuation of the summit and hope to uh, to see you soon in the next activities. And, and uh, please, so take part in the education activities in the next coming months, okay? So we will looking forward to receiving your contact and, and to be with you together. Thank you very much and see you soon. Thanks a lot, team. Bye. Thank you.